Hey guys, welcome to the first of three videos where I'm going to be walking you through what I baked for Thanksgiving Day. This particular video, I'll be walking you through the rough puff pastry recipe. Of course, from Claire Saffitt's dessert person, I'm trying to bake as many recipes from here as I possibly can this holiday season. So I hope you enjoy this video. You'll see I actually had to make two rounds of rough puff before I got the hydration right. So it can be a little bit tricky, but overall it was a very smooth recipe, easy to follow. So I really hope you enjoy it and that you try it out yourself. So the ingredients for this recipe are super straightforward. Butter, flour, sugar, and salt. So you're gonna take the flour, sugar, salt, and just whisk that all together. And the real nuance comes with the butter. So there are a couple steps you need to do here. You're gonna grab three sticks of butter and cut one of them in half so that you have a stick and a half which you're gonna cut up and then a stick and a half that you're gonna put into the freezer. So we want everything in this entire recipe to be cold. That's sort of the most important part. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna grab both our flour mixture and that one and a half sticks of butter and we're gonna actually put them in the freezer while we're doing the steps with the other stick and a half of butter. So with those, you're gonna really thinly slice it. Just put it on a plate and you're going to put that in the fridge. So that stays cold while you grate in the frozen butter that you have in the freezer right now. All right guys, so my butter has been in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes. My slicely chopped butter is in the fridge. We're gonna keep that in there, but I'm gonna pull out the flour mixture and the frozen butter. I'm gonna quickly toss those butter sticks in the flour, and then I'm gonna use my box grater and I'm gonna grate it on this larger size straight into the bowl. So we wanna get really fine pieces of cold butter in there, and then we'll start working in the other pieces of butter after that. So let's go. getting a nice even coating all around and then I'm gonna start grating so I'll do this half first bring in my box grater it's an awful house. I want it to get... okay and once you get down to a little nub like this you can just go ahead and toss that in there to come through so now that I have all the butter grated you can see I have these really nice fine cold shavings and I'm just gonna toss toss that into my dough. I'm gonna switch to a fork just so that my hands don't warm it up too much. So I'm just gonna toss these. Okay, so now I have my thinly sliced butter and I'm going to just bring this into the dough. I wanna make sure none of the pieces are stuck together. So just pull them all apart and then you want to just toss them in the flour so that they're all coated and separated. So incorporating the butter like this in small pieces when it's cold not only contributes to the layering that you're going to get, but also the tenderness. So the smaller the pieces of butter you have are, the more tender your dough will be in the end. All right, that's it well coated okay so this this is what my mixture is looking like now I have these thin pieces of butter and the shards that I have evenly coated so now I'm gonna go to the fridge and I have put a cup of water I've added some ice I'm gonna bring this over and we're gonna add this slowly until the dough comes together Okay, so we're gonna start with a half a cup of this ice water. And then you really don't know how much liquid it's going to take in the end. So you kind of just have to eyeball it, see when it starts to come together. There's a half of a cup. I'm gonna start mixing this with my hands. Pushing the dough together, you wanna encourage it to form a ball. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. 
Once you see the dough start to come together sort of like this we're gonna remove it so I'll just put that on my work surface okay add a little bit more so here we have our dough it has come together And now I'm gonna wrap it in some plastic wrap and we're gonna go through the first chill. So you'll see me add a little bit more water here and I just kept doing this and this is where I went wrong. I overhydrated the dough because, I mean, look, it's not even really coming together. It's still very flaky by normal like bread dough standards. This is not coming together, um, but it still was too much water. So you'll see that this doesn't end up working out very well for me, but I wrap this up, I put it in the fridge, and then the whole point of it being in the fridge for two hours is it allows it to hydrate. So obviously it's crumbly here, but it's gonna get a lot more hydrated. So I really just should have let it be even drier, which is what I end up doing in the second round, but this really shocked me um, because if you look at it, you do not think that this dough is overhydrated at all, but you'll see pretty soon how clear it is that it is. Okay, it's not a perfect rectangle, but I'm worried about overworking it and it getting too warm. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Okay, so that is gonna stay in the fridge for about two hours, so it'll really firm up. And then we're gonna roll it out and fold it twice to give us some really nice layers. So I'll be back in about two hours. Okay, so the dough's been in the fridge for about two hours. I'm gonna bring it out here, pound it out, and then do two sets of envelope folds, you could say. So let's do it. All right, so now I'm gonna roll it out so that it is three times as long as it is wide. It might end up making it a little bit skinnier. Okay, so here's where the folding happens. Once you have it three times as long as it is wide, you're gonna fold it into thirds. So take one half, fold it over the center third, and then do the same thing to the other side. You can see just how wet and pliable this dough is, and I'm about to notice and make a comment because it's just not looking like it's supposed to. This feels like it's just getting too warm. So I'm gonna put this back in the fridge, just calling it audible. I do not want this butter to melt. So I'm gonna let it firm up before I do my second round of folding. All right guys, so I think I'm actually gonna start over because this is just too hydrated. Like you can see, it's a totally different consistency to what Claire has. And I just know that it's not gonna turn out right. So unfortunately we're gonna toss it it's just too soft and it was too soft since I hydrated it. I think I overhydrated it. So, um, bummer. I'm just gonna run all that back again. <laughs> okay. So I did everything again. This is after I had grated the butter and then this is the dough that I ended up working with. So this is it before I wrapped it up to sit in the fridge for two hours and you can see how flaky it is. I mean, it's like barely holding together, but in Claire's video, that's how it looks. It just, it's like there are pieces falling off all the time. So because it hydrates during those two hours in the fridge, I just made it way drier than I thought was appropriate <laughs> and it ended up working. This is after the two hours in the fridge and you can just already tell that it is so much more hydrated than that 
crumbly mess that I put into the fridge. There's still pieces coming off, but it's definitely a lot better. And this is what I needed it to look like. So I was really happy this time. So this is me folding the second round of dough. Um, same thing I did before. Want to break it into threes visually and then fold the right side in over the center and then the left side or vice versa. So this time it went a lot better. I was able to do one fold and then roll it out and do the second immediately. Whereas after the first one, as you saw, I just was too worried about it and I put it in the fridge before deciding to call it. So then I just cut the puff pastry in half because you actually only need half of a serving to create the apple tart. So I wrap them in plastic wrap separately, put one in the freezer, which I'm gonna use to make cookies closer to Christmas, and the other I put in the fridge to stay there overnight so that I could roll it out the next morning to make the apple tart. All right, hey guys, I hope you found that video helpful. And if you tried this recipe, I hope something like this or Claire's video will help you see how much water you should be adding because honestly watching her video and seeing that the dough was still allowed to crumble after I had added water made all of the difference. So I hope that these visual cues from this video might help you make it yourself. The next video you're gonna see is me using that rough puff to actually make the apple tart recipe in Dessert Person. This um, it took me a long time, but it was hugely rewarding. It was great to see the rough puff in action. It made a lot of really good flaky layers. So I would totally deem this a success. And I'll be using the other half of the rough puff because you only need half for the apple tart. I'll be using the other half to make some cookies closer to Christmas. So I hope you'll watch that video too. But in the meantime, go ahead and check out my video for making the apple tart. And I hope it helps you if you try it at home. Thanks everybody. Please um, remember to like and subscribe. I keep forgetting to say that. Um, but if you like these videos, I'll be making a lot more about baking and dessert person specifically. So I hope you enjoy. Take care. Thank you.